Alright, here's my um, coil I've been winding, and you can see each layer has um, a separate winding, and uh, you can see there's the first wire, and second, and so forth. And I notice um, this is just straight wire, um, 24 gauge um, high temperature uh, wire for. Um, motors and stuff uh, with a insulation on it magnet wire actually motor wire but it's being used as magnet wire now you can see this is all sort of inset you can see here there's an inset here and I don't think I can better describe it to you unless I pull this stuff off so I'm just gonna unwrap this and show you what's going on here. Okay, here is here's what is going on here. You can see there's a big gap right here. See that? And there's a big gap from here to here. Now, that's only uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 layers of wire. And I need to do 21. Here's another one I wound, but it's a special kind of um, wire that's been wound together, trifiler wire, and I soldered it all and I uh, was just wondering what it would do. So, because I envision this is light, but it's a little bit too much because it has to have resistance. So that's my problem is there's no resist, there's very little resistance here. To make a good coil uh, for a generator or a electromagnet, same difference. Uh, has to have resistance. Now you can see the um, if you come back on here, you can see right there. That's how much I have on that. Now if you look at if you put these side by side and you look at them, there's less on here than there is on here. See that? There's there's less um, uh, what do you call it? gap here than there is here. Now I figured out a way to go around this gap problem, and the way you do that is you um, take these wires and you wind it this way, and then you put your Teflon over it, and you stop, and then you. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it for you so you can see. You take this whole thing out, okay, and you reverse it. Put it in the other way. Okay. Oops, I'll just tighten this. Tighten it up there. Okay, and then you put it in the other way, right? And then you take uh, so you've done one winding uh counterclockwise this way because you work clockwise the other way. So it's now you now your winding's counterclockwise going um, right going this way. Uh, now you take another piece of wire and you wind clockwise this way. Now regularly when they make um, and then you cut it. Now regularly when, when they do windings they go back and forth. But we're actually cutting it each time. We're not going back and forth. We're cutting it, flipping it over, cutting it, flipping it over, cutting it, flipping it over, cutting it, flipping it over. And the reason why we flip it over is so we don't get this gap. Because you can see, you can, you can wind against the wires very easily. But once you come to the end, it's very hard to wind against the wires because you've reached the end. But if you make a winding pattern where you're always filling the gaps, you can... Um, uh, you know the gaps that you always make aren't always in one area. They're they're both areas really. So um, it it evens out. It goes back. You know you you have a gap here. You have a gap here. Here 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 here. So the gap switches every time you 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 move that thing. So you basically you don't have a gap. You end with no. You know you end up with hard like no gap. So that eliminates the entire gap problem. And um, well you're probably going to say well Walter Russell wound his. Uh, coils in one direction. What are you doing? Different, um, Delf Delphini, you know, what, what the heck, Delphini? <laughs> well, guess what? 
Electricity can flow any direction. That's the beauty of electricity. So, if you have a coil wound this way, you can still send electricity that way. <laughs> so it doesn't matter which way you wind the coils. It just matters where you send the electricity. So when you're done with all this, you know, your windings, um, you can send the electricity any way, any way you want. Um, yeah, so when it comes to uh, time to wind these guys, I'm probably going to wind them the same way, you know, the whole thing one way, and then turn it around, and the whole thing the other way. Or, yeah, and then the whole thing one way, whole thing the other way, whole thing one way. In fact, you probably don't even need to turn it around. You could probably just start winding it, you know, if you could, if you could literally just wind the other way, you know, if you're good at winding this way, I guess, you could, you could wind it this way without having to, to, to flip this guy in and out. But I like, I'm, I like clockwise. It's, it's much more natural to do clockwise and counter, doing a counterclockwise wind is very difficult for me anyway, so I'd rather prefer just to flip this little, um, rod here over and you're done. So, yeah, that's basically my video on that. So, yeah, we were testing out this. This is all in, uh, this is all in, um, parallel. All these are in parallel. Uh, all the layers. And it didn't do much. Because it's like one big, it's like if I just handed you a cable, you know, one large cable, that's it. You know, all the cable from here to here. There's no resistance. <laughs> it's very little resistance, like none. So, yeah, that overcomes that um and the other problem here okay so i i solved my gap problem by by wrote by uh, taking this guy out and you know reversing it um i'll do it again here just so you can get my drift you know i solved my problem of winding it by doing that little deal you know that that mechanism and uh, it's a mechanical thing, really. It's just you're mechanically winding it the opposite way. And, you know, getting electricity to flow the other way, um, you know, beautiful. It's all however you hook up the wires. So it'll all be one direction, whether it's, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, it, it'll all be one direction. It will be perfect because the wires don't know which way you wound them. You <laughs> know, they're not intelligent. You are. So you hook them up, you know, wherever you want uh, the flow of electricity to go, you know, one direction. So, um, that solves the gap problem. Now, the other problem I, I was thinking of was the space. Here's the space problem, okay? I'm going to show you guys this. This is, uh, 21 wires. 21 of these, um, 24 gauge wires wound in here. Now, if you take this guy, right, set him right here, and you get your calipers, okay, actually let's zero these out here, okay, and you um, measure this, now I'm going to have to pull a stunt here, hopefully I don't ruin my camera, <laughs> hopefully you guys can still see me, okay, if you measure this, you know, it's two point, two point, Oh, two, eight. you know. Okay, so we got 2.028, right? Now that was uh, 21 wires. And this was, uh, I forget how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17? Wait a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, that's 17 wires, okay. Almost to 20, right? Now that's 2 inches, right? Now if you run this dealy... I'm going to damage these coils if I don't watch it. Anyway, if you get the size of this guy, which I'm doing right now, you come up to 2.126 inches in diameter. So. Not only does the um, the uh, well, we we got rid of the gap problem, but if you're if you're winding them without uh, making the trifiler wires first, you have a problem because this gets thicker now. 
So trifiler compacts the wire and makes it thinner. Um, so you get a, a lot thinner coil in the end. And uh, it's a lot more energy you can put in that you know, coil because you have more wires you can put on the actual uh, bobbin. Now this, um, if I wind, uh, where was I, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I wind four more layers, this thing's going to get, uh, you know, a little bit more thicker, and you can see it's already pretty thick, and, um, you know, it's, it might even, you can even see it right here, it's already meeting these holes. So by the time I get to uh, 20, what was it, 21, 18, 19, 20, 21, it'll be way over those holes, you know, at least half. So I won't be able to put my little wires in there anymore. So I won't, I might not be able to make 21 layers on this, you know, coil. So that's the problem with uh, non trifilar windings you cannot have enough room to wind with um, and you can see that reduces your space just right here visually right here you know you got a big gap you know you've got a big gap and here you got a small gap so here you got better more efficient use of wire here you have less efficient use of wire so um, that will reduce your diameter of of uh, uh, coil by making trifiler or even uh, quad filer you know if you want to do four on on the upper wire so the very on. last thing I want to discuss here is that I have a problem with um, the layers in which if it's trifiler wound you'll have all the energy coming up in one layer um, and it'll be a different you know, it'll be like a spiral and this will be just a straight shot of energy it'll actually be the same <clears throat> it'll be a bigger <clears throat> diameter of energy you know instead of <clears throat> shooting straight through it'll be like wow wow so I don't know if I don't know if um, that's going to change anything I don't think it will because it still has a motion inward or outward you know we're still gonna go in or out it's just not gonna go all the way in because um, it's gonna it's gonna be concentrated in different areas um, you know if it's trifiler you're gonna have three wires we'll say these three wires are concentrated into one wire so you only have energy of those three wires at, at, the first level you know and that's going up and down you know it's it's kind of oscillating and then this one is oscillating but it all gets condensed into the core you know so I don't think we're really gonna have a problem with it so yeah because that's the application is condensed in the core so we're, we're good we're definitely good because all we're doing is making an electromagnet so I think that uh, that solves that or a generator all right